Hey, yo, I am the star in any room that I stand in. I am the standout. You just my stand in. These bitches copy my homework. That's what they hand in. That's why I'm private like the airports I land in. Life is a beach house. Don't let the sand in. I ball in any arena. Go let the fans in. What's up, y'all? I hope all is well. So in this video, I want to react to Brazilians dragging Isa for giving birth to a light-skinned baby. Um, some people are referring to the baby as white. Um, you know how I do on this channel. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, that is a mixed MGM black baby. So the baby's light skin, not white skin. Period. But anyway, <laughs> I wanted to react to this situation because it directly connects to a concept I was talking about during my live stream where I was talking about the racially ambiguous slash racially undefinable experience. And I was talking about how there's um, a phenomenon that sometimes happens where light skinned black people who are genetically mixed race, usually MGMs will have biracial children with white or non-black people and then the child will come out either looking like the European side or looking non-black at all and sometimes it causes this really negative schism in the light-skinned person's head and they feel like um, you know they might have a lot of conflicts like internal conflicts about the baby's appearance or they might feel guilty like this is a real thing that happens specifically to the women I'm gonna be honest with you I don't really believe that a lot of men of African descent feel this way because generally men of African descent don't value blackness so they don't really see it as like a loss to themselves or their child generally if the child doesn't look black or if they're in in their experience or from their perspective is not having a black experience i don't think most men of african descent really care about that they might lip service pretend or say that they care about that but i don't really think that in fact i actually think a lot of them would actually prefer the kids to look on black <laughs> it's usually women of african descent that have these issues because generally women of african descent are the people that value blackness and that is true in the United States. And that is true in Brazil also. And I want to talk more about Brazil um, and about the way race functions and operates in Brazil. Because, you know, Brazil is kind of like South Africa in the sense that it's known as one of these like very mixed race nations. With a lot of different cultures and ethnic groups and skin tones and mixed people and whatnot. And so it's often raised you know praises this, like racial like democracy or paradise or whatever but when you really listen to the experiences of black and mixed brazilians that is far from that <laughs> and that's not you know it's a lot more complex and like there's one um there's one mentality or experience that's promoted to the rest of the world about the racial experience in brazil and then there's another one that is actually lived experience of people who are from there and you know i'm not brazilian at all i didn't grow up around brazilians or anything but you know being somebody that um has family from that part of the world and understands the history you know I already know how the performative you know racial pride and you know color democracy and performative like <laughs> diversity that is praised in Latin America um like the Mesti Sahe that's really you know disguised as anti-blackness or anti-indigenous sentiments a lot of the time I know <laughs> how that has shown up in history and how that continues to show up in the narrative um around these countries so I just find that to be very interesting and in analyzing just the differences and similarities between um the racial experience in Brazil as well as the United States especially for Afro mixed people I just find it to be fascinating I actually did one of my projects um in school about just comparing the racial differences between how uh Brazil mixed Brazilians identify versus how mixed people in the United States identify and just comparing the two and talking about some of the contributing factors to lead into that and it was just so really interesting how I it's been a, a couple years since I re-looked at that um pair, that study and I think I'm gonna maybe do a live stream going over that if that's something I would be interested in in seeing uh let me know in the comment section but um I remember that one of the conclusions that I actually drew from that research was that Although the racial um, history and experience, day to day experiences of these people were different all the time, a lot of the time they were very similar. And pretty much the same contributing factors contribute to why people identified or saw themselves the way that they did. That's pretty much the same across the board. <laughs> so, all these other outside historical factors that people, you know, contribute to why people might identify the way that they do or see themselves the way that they do, even in other countries, they're still pretty much very simple ways to understand why people and why humans in general you know monoracial mixed or whatnot or whatever cultural or not um t 
end up seeing themselves or identifying the way that they do. Anyway, I'm going on to a whole tangent. This is about Isa. <laughs> but anyway, Brazil is a very interesting racial country. And I think that in the United States, we have a certain perspective review of it that we're given. But from watching, you know, this video that I, I where I found out about the topic from from Black Brazil today so shout out to him um it's a YouTube channel and um blog site ran by a black American na man named Marcus so shout out to him definitely check out his channel I'm gonna have that linked in the description box below he makes a lot of good content um and he's lived out in Brazil for like almost 20 years so he understands both cultures really well and so hearing it from a black American's perspective um and how he talks and how he incorporates that with the perspectives of actual Brazilians and translates it is really helpful and you know I hope we can get more channels like this just talking about Latin America in general because the language barrier and information is a huge issue too um, but anyway that's not what I'm here to talk about but yeah shout out to Marcus at Black Brazil today but that's how I originally found out about this situation involving Isa because I've always known about Isa for like the last two years or so I follow her on Instagram so I knew she was pregnant and I kind of knew a little bit about the whole scandal where her um, boyfriend ex-boyfriend and everything but um, I didn't hear about the situation about her daughter being dragged for being light skinned. So I just found that to be insane when I um, when I saw this this video on Black Brazil today because I had literally just been talking about how you know I even have a friend who was telling me about a family member of hers who is you know currently going through a little bit of a depressive episode because her child basically came out white and I've definitely heard of this before not only in my personal life but like heard about stories online as well where some mixed people will have you know other mixed kids and they feel some type of way about how the kid comes out <laughs> so that's a situation with a person who's like light skin or racially ambiguous having a biracial kid but with the situation with Isa, she's you know a brown skin we can assume basically monoracial black woman um from Brazil and we know that basically almost everybody in Brazil has admixture to some degree even though that doesn't there are plenty of monoracial brazilians i want to make that clear because that's a misconception but a lot of brazilians the vast majority are mixed to some degree the white ones and the black ones that's just how it is in, in latin america in general so we can assume that isa does have a level of mixture but socially isa moves through the world as a monoracial brown-skinned black woman who's brazilian like you know so it's kind of different than a racially ambiguous or light-skinned woman having a mixed kid and then basically having the basically not even being able to deal with the issues that their mixed kid might have to deal with even though they ha might have to deal with that their their self so I think it's a very interesting dynamic when it's a brown skin or dark skin woman who has a very ambiguous or light skin kid and mind you we haven't even seen the baby yet this is the crazy thing about it we haven't even seen a picture of the baby's f physical features or even the back of her hand we only saw the palm of her hand so we can you know everybody's palms of their hands are super light skin my the palms of my hands look like a white person too so <laughs> that doesn't mean anything because if you turn my hand around it's like you know I have a, like a sun-kissed tan so it's like <laughs> You can't determine a baby's skin color just from or how white or mixed or black they're going to look in society based on a hand picture. So the fact that like not only are they dragging a newborn baby girl, a literal child over her skin color being lightest towards her. Not only are they doing that, but also they're automatically making the assumption about, oh, Isa has a white baby. Oh, Isa, you know, washed her jeans out or Isa, you know, uh you know did the whole improve the race thing you know whatever like they're already, already making assumptions about her based on that small picture and it just shows how like of a m much of an emotional reaction not only sometimes people who have mixed kids will have but that the public and society will have towards mixed people in this obsession over oh how how is your phenotype gonna like how are you gonna be perceived in society um how's the nose looking let's look behind the ears what's the hair looking like you know it's, it's really disturbing and in societies and cultures like in the united states and in latin america where they're hyper race focused and like these you know this fixation on how the baby's gonna come looking out and oh get with this person so the kid comes out looking this way and you know all these really toxic mentalities towards like reproduction and, and race mixing that stem from the neg the negative histories that we have it, it can be really toxic for mixed people and for people who look mixed <laughs> even if you're not directly biracial or you're mgm or whatever it just creates this really like uncomfortable toxic obsessive culture that it, it, it's very obvious it's being it's very obviously being depicted in this situation where how they're literally dragging isa 
Isa and her daughter who's a newborn like I find that disgusting and it also kind of shows you that black people are literally the same everywhere which is what I've been trying to say in my channel <laughs> like black people do not need a one drop rule to act and think the way that they do black people did not need <laughs> um you know I don't know uh, America's promotion of blonde blue eyes for black men to be self-hating and value anything that's not black <laughs> Like all of these things are literally the case all over the world with black people. Like, bro, even in South Africa, in countries where there was no one job rule, they're literally in Africa. The majority of people are um, are black or some type of per person of color. Same thing in Brazil. Yet they still have all of these colorism issues, all of these issues where the men don't want to marry the women, all of these issues of um, baby daddies and with fathers that are creating out of wedlock homes and not showing up in their households not creating full families marrying the women these are all issues everywhere it's the same in brazil it's the same in bro it's the same everywhere so that's what i've been trying to stress a lot also like we have talked about me and a lot of other creators have talked about how they're very comfortable dragging children they're very comfortable coming at little black girls little black boys celebrity children that are black coming at their features and this happens to celebrity kids of all skin tones all you know backgrounds everything all ethnicities and clearly they doing it down in brazil too i know africans do it and i know for a fact caribbeans do it so is not, i'm not surprised that it, um brazilians do it too um even in petty conversation you'll hear women coming at each other's kids i remember growing up having grown women um come up and make negative comments about my hair because i used to wear a natural so this is clearly something kids are not considered off limits um within african descent communities and it's really scary and unfortunate so <coughs> this is something I'm sorry that contributes to the adultification of not only black little girls but black children in general because if kids are not even off limits to talk about their skin tone and features you getting triggered over a hand picture then why how, how are we to assume that kids are not off limits in other ways as well to y'all it, it's really scary but I think it definitely all contributes and this is exactly why but this is exactly why I created that term lightism. And all I freaking did was take the term light and then put the ism, ism behind it, which is typical grammatical English like rules. Like that's not <laughs> anybody could do that. Also, shout out to Rashida Schrober. She did that with darkism too, which I mean, she doesn't really didn't really have to do in my opinion because people already think colorism is only about dark skin people, which is why I was like, okay, well, if light-skinned people can't use colorism and y'all saying we don't suffer from colorism even though alice walker never said that already said that two years ago also but anywho alice walker never said that colorism was about a specific skin tone but the way that we talk about colorism in the modern era and that has been used recently it's only used to talk about colorism against dark-skinned people and so i was willing to succeed on that and i was willing to be understanding and i was like okay i get why y'all feel that way i get i understand you know whatever I personally don't agree with it, but I'll agree to disagree. So that's why I did the whole lightism thing and I created my series. And the whole point of why I created the series in general was because when I first got on YouTube, I was mostly talking about only black women's like, f like feminist womanist issues, like a lot about black femicide, a lot about um, divestment and relationships and stuff like that. And I didn't know how people were going to react to me talking about being light skin and mixed. So I was like, well, let me just do like a series and see like how people will take to it. And then from there, I'll, you know, go more with it if it works. And so that's basically what happened. So people were like, it was a good response. And people were like, I got a lot of positive feedback from it. So that's why I continue with the series. And so once I seen that this was something y'all wanted me to talk about, and that I was, you know, making an impact from talking about these topics. That's why I continued with the light skin and mixed content. I kind of like more focused on that now, even though I still incorporate womanism and feminism and black women's issues into my content, because that's still something I'm passionate about and the perspective I speak from. And that's what I pr have always presented myself as. I just, you know, I just decided to run with it. So it's no reason that I haven't made any lightism awareness series videos, but that's basically why basically my whole channel now is about lightism awareness. <laughs> but to make a long story short, <laughs> this is exactly why I saw the need for that, because this type of thing, even though I can ag agree that brown skin and dark skin little babies are dragged also, I definitely feel like people and this goes for white and black people. People are very much 
okay with dragging or making fun of mixed and light-skinned children because it plays into this whole thing as to where there's this idea that we already have it easier or we're already favored or privileged so it's basically looked at as like punching down like oh well you have it easier than other black people so we can make fun of your looks or we can drag your baby for being light-skinned and things like that and what it really stems from and another reason why I kind of incorporated the term lightism is because I do kind of feel like the prejudice and like the social ostracization that light skin and mixed people face I do kind of feel like it comes from a different place than prejudice against dark skin people in the Americas prejudice and colorism towards dark skin people it comes from anti-african sentiments so it comes from people having a negative perspective of africa and blackness and anything that's associated with the african continent including the culture and the people that's deeply rooted in the america's social system <laughs> and that's like one of the the basis of like race in the united states and latin america as well is anti-blackness so this issue with dark skin or dark skin people or an African people in the Americas comes from there as where when it comes to the prejudice and ostracization that light skin people and mixed people face that comes from people's discomfort and hatred of miscegenation and race mixing in the United States or the assumption of it even if you are not directly mixed or biracial like Isa's daughter because how you look represents that that has happened in history it kind of like subconsciously reminds people that miscegenation happened it's like they automatically have like an issue or a emotionally aggressive response to it because people don't like it and so when you think about Brazil people think like oh it's the race mixing capital and it's beautiful and it's you know the rainbow paradise I think they say that about um South Africa also it's like that it's like the rainbow nation or something but if you think about all of these nations all of these places are deeply racist <laughs> they literally have systematically tried to exterminate the black and the mixed populations uh they <laughs> literally have kept the the white European structure at the top economically socially whatever that was the basis of these places history but then they promote race mixing and people somehow interpret that as like unity or this promotion of diversity and it's like no and that's what's really insidious about like specifically like latin american um history and like the way that racism operates in latin america that i feel to be especially insidious where they promote race mixing not because or not for the goal of wanting to make these beautiful like diverse families where the bridge is gapped and people are learning to interact and be you know more understanding and tolerant of each other but they're promoting race mixing with the goal of trying to to create a wider population and I kind of talked about that in my video and I feel like I didn't handle that topic with that much grace and it might have sounded weird but I kind of was talking about how like in Latin America the, even before genetics they've known for a very long time that if you keep mix, mixing a mixed person with a white person you're eventually going to get a phenotypical white person so even if they have like 15 percent black ancestry or indigenous ancestry they're basically an admixed white person they can basically phenotypically and socially be a white person in Latin America be, as we're in the United States it wasn't like that and so what I feel like is I feel like is especially insidious about Latin America is that like if you're promoting race mixing with the goal of trying to basically get rid of indigenous um uh, and African phys physical people and culture that's very insidious as we're in the United States they basically just kept it segregated and we're just like we just don't want to we just don't fuck with you basically like we don't want to really mix with you and we're keeping the mixture like under wraps and we're keeping the race mixing hidden and we we're promoting segregation even though on the low we're all well we're we're still engaging sexually with you but we socially don't want that to be a dynamic like I almost feel like like I kind of like <laughs> this is gonna sound weird but like I'm the type of person like I want my racism to my face like I'd rather the white person just tell me they don't fucking want me around they don't fucking like mixed people they don't freaking want a mixed person in their family don't freaking sit up here and 
commingle and date black people and reproduce with black people then you have this mixed child and you're racially abusing them or still upholding white supremacy or you know degrading the black fam the black side of the family and the black father and trying to shame the mixed kid about their looks and that's the type of stuff that happens in latin america and then as the mixed person who looks like me who's like the product you know of all that then you have all of these psychological and social issues that you have to deal with and that's um, kind of what was talked about towards the end of Black Brazil Today's video also where he was talking to a mixed race advocate in Brazil, what they call Pardo. And she's an activist for Pardo's in Brazil. And she, that's exactly what she was talking about. She was like the promotion of race mixing in Brazil. And I would say in Latin America, just in general, is performative. And the the mixed child turns out suffering and and is the person who gets the backlash from that and who socially has to go through life with the like quote-unquote shame and I'm not saying that it's actual shame but that's kind of how it was a view you are because you physically represent the product of race mixing you're the one that gives the backlash not saying the parents don't but you get what I'm saying <laughs> and so if you come from a family full of mixed people and there is no monoracial white or black person in your family your whole family is getting it and the whole and people are looking at a lot of times the whole family suspect especially in the United States they there's a lot of like um negative talk about families who of uh, light skinned people who date each other um that's where that comes from i always grew up hearing that like people talking negatively about f light skinned families like people saying like oh if, if the whole family's light skinned that means that they don't um you know that they're colorists or something like that so people have always had this hostility <laughs> towards like towards mixed people and it's because of what you represent in american and i'm talking about the americas north and south and caribbean because of what mixed and light-skinned people represent based on their history there's always this hostile reaction <laughs> it no matter where the kid came from even if they're mgm or biracial the thing with biracial people is that because the the mixture is physical and you see it more obvious it's more like it's it's more polarizing for people so they get a more you know emotional reaction as where like with mgm families it's more so just like it's it's I don't know I can't I, I don't want to make that video this video about this <laughs> but the whole point of me just talking about like this aspect of it is like people would probably be surprised that Isa would get um like dragged from Brazilians for having a light-skinned baby or for having a mixed baby but I'm just explaining like subconsciously where that is coming from like the the promotion and the love of mixing is just it's very performative latin america and one of the things that the parlo activist said in black brazil today's video was that she was like the mixed race body itself is not what's praised person itself is not really what's valued even though they might be fetishized or seen as beautiful the person the child itself is not seen as what's valued but it's the step towards what it's going towards so both sides are having this like almost in her words her words were that both sides are having this violent reaction towards the mixed child itself because of what they represent and I just feel like that was just extremely just very deep what she got into and it it just explains so much of like to me where this comes from and where like the hostility comes from and I haven't really heard that many people break it down in that way your families we grow up being compared from the cradle onwards right so it really struck me until you spoke now about the interracial relationship that's happening within your family that you're rooting for the person to be born darker and this is something that we're always thrown back and forth so of course the structure of the country the social structure is going to put pressure on us to become whiter but in contemporary times the movements are going to pray that we're not born white right so we're always being thrown back and forth and our characteristics are always we're in the belly and they're they're cheering us on i hope our hair isn't so curly i hope it isn't like this and then you're born into a family under these looks it's very violent so you heard what Beatrice had to say there. I mean, she packed a lot in that little short clip. Because I definitely just, I, I think that the the prejudice and the issue that people have with Afro mixed people, it's way deeper than I feel like a lot of people are willing to let on. And a lot of it stems from people's hostility and dislike of race mixing in the United States, in the, the Americas, based on the history. And it's just the history between black and white people. So it's like, it sounds too sad, but it's like, we kind of caught in the middle. So it's like, because you represent like, in America, this like, represents something that was supposed to be hidden or supposed to, that was even illegal in most places, illegal is supposed to be hidden. Because you represent that, you're going to have a very difficult time navigating a um a society that is very 
polarizing in a black and white way when <laughs> you physically represent a union whether it was positive or not you physically represent a union that was literally fucking illegal and very much unwanted so that's that being the social dynamic is also why I find it insane that people will say things like oh um light skin and mixed people have always had privileges and always been you know treated and favored better and it's like you know shout out to multiracial movement because I remember her saying this years back and I it, it had never hit me like this but like it, ha it was literally illegal to have a mixed child it was literally illegal to create a mixed child for most of American history it was like it was fucking illegal for mixed people to exist like even with the one drop rule it was way deeper than just like oh they're trying to keep us for, from identifying they literally did not want mixed children to fucking exist and if you did exist they wanted you to pretend like you didn't exist that was the goal you can call yourself in the slave quarters whatever the fuck you want to call yourself but don't come here trying to seek any legal or civil protections or saying that you're entitled to anything so it's like that is a, a real history that mixed lines of people really have had to do with even in brazil and in latin america there's a lot of history specifically in that way that is never talked about but people only talk about the few maybe one or two you know biracial or mixed kids that you know was throwing a couple coins or ty had to read <laughs> like it, it's really disrespectful but anyway i'm going on a, like a, a long tangent um, but yeah, when I just saw the amount of hostility that Isa's baby got and how she was just dragged and it just proved to me like why I'm doing this and like further to stay on my course. And it's also to me a great example of like, like the, um, part of the activist was saying as well, just like this performative love of mixed Afro mixed children that, um, that persists in north and, and latin america and in the caribbean it's really unfortunate and i just really want to bring light to this situation because nobody in the united states would ever think that brazilians would drag a black woman for having a light-skinned baby but this is what happens and <laughs> you know i i haven't seen it to this extent but i've even seen this happen with um black women in the united states too where they don't like how her mixed child came out or they feel like the mixed child came out looking too um you know too white or even sometimes too black that even happened that's even happened to white women with mixed kids because they dragged chloe kardashian for having a brown skin uh biracial daughter and i made a whole video about that too so if people don't feel like the woman has the mixed the, the aesthetic of the mixed kid that they want or they think that is beautiful or they're expecting they're gonna drag her and that's just they're gonna drag her and the baby and I just I just feel like that's really freaking gross and it just shows like an extreme level of misogyny and just disrespect for people and children of, of African descent um so I just really want to to definitely bring light to this situation because we're being told that this never happens to us and that um, we're just all oh, we're constantly getting our praises sung and that people are just so hype and happy to only see light skinned babies. And that's just absolutely not true. Um, in fact, I can even this is anecdotal. But, in, you know, of course, I grew up in the United States. And I will say I do think that and this is a whole video itself, but I'm just going to put this out there. I do think and I know for a fact that in the black community, they and everybody knows this, that in the American black community, they favor and value dark skin on males they don't really value dark skin on females but they value dark skin on males and I always knew this because in my I think my last video where I talked about skin tone blindness I was talking about how my little brother who was dark skin with quote-unquote good hair not my words society's words just to give you an idea <laughs> my dark skin brother he was constantly praised as a baby but my high yellow light skin brother with light eyes he would get compliments too but I also remember people being hostile towards him also being hostile at the playground other kids adults saying he needs his hair done you know say, saying that um he needs to sit in the sun for a little bit saying that he's undercooked yeah I completely remember that I, I've never really spoken on this before but yeah people used to talk about his appearance too and they would talk about his skin color I don't I gotta ask my mother if she remembers this but yeah they would talk about his um skin color often and say oh he's un he's really light or he's so pale and things like that like p acts if he's sick old people say that my mom need to keep him outside more like you know all types of stuff like that and I just thought it was interesting how when he was a ba when he was a light-skinned baby boy um it was like you know a lot of people would kind of be like and eh, like you know they would 
yeah I don't know they would kind of like make comments but as he got to be older and reach puberty then you'd have these weird ass older pedo bitches that would be like oh he's so adorable he gonna be my boyfriend one day and you gonna have all the girls um trying to trying to talk to you when you get older like you know when he started to be in like middle school high school age that's the comments he started to, to get I'm like you bitches are mad weird like this is a child but I, I definitely noticed that um that they would sometimes they would I feel like be hypercritical of my little brother when he was a baby and a toddler because he was a little light-skinned boy like I don't know for I can't prove that for sure but I just remember the difference in responses <laughs> and again they were constantly being gaslit and told oh that light-skinned people are always getting our praises sung and it's only compliments all day and it's never any negativity but I can definitely bring up a lot of examples of situations that I've observed with not only my little brother but other light-skinned boys growing up also where I feel like either they were ignored or they didn't get as much praise even from the other little light skin um not from the other like little kids um and then but sometimes it would go the other way too where there are you know them aunties or them grandmas that maybe that's the only light-skinned or biracial kid in the family so they you know they that's their favorite something like that you know I didn't grow up in a family like that I grew up in a family full of brown skin and light skin people so I didn't grow up in a family like that so I just can't speak from that perspective so I'm not saying that it doesn't happen but I'm just speaking from what I've observed but anyways I'm going to wrap this video up but the last thing I wanted to touch on when it came to this topic is just the sheer like audacity and you know the double speak and contradictions of you know black people globally and how just entitled to black women's bodies that they feel because something that also was just dripping and rife with misogyny within the situation that really bothered me um I'll try to put the comment on the screen um was that they were just like and I can't tell if these comments came from black men or black women, but they were just like basically talking like basically making it seem like Isa is entitled to have a black baby and like, you know, making it seem like, oh, it's so disgusting, even though she if she did have a black baby. She just had a light skinned black baby. But anyway, but basically trying to make it seem like Isa is entitled to having a dark skinned black baby. I guess we can say that. Um, even though I'm sure that she would have been very happy with whatever skin tone her child is, comes out to be, or would have been, um, and, and these people are just projecting, but they're just talking like she's entitled to have like a dark skin child just because that's what they want. And there's just like this constant theme globally of the black community feeling entitled to black women's bodies and decisions on who they decide to reproduce with. And like, there was a lot of commentary, um, on, them trying to say that this guy was white and they're like oh she carried a white man's baby and basically trying to call her like uh I hate to say this like a bw like a b winch if you know what I'm talking about that basically trying to accuse her of being that and what's even more crazy about that is that the baby daddy is not even white like he I would definitely call him like a mix like Latin guy Brazilian guy but I would not call him white at all like he looks like a stereotypical like Latin man <laughs> he doesn't look he looks mixed he does not look white by any means so I just find it funny how globally whenever black people want to play on emotions and they want to use um you know situational ethics shout out to brown and beige community I got that from him because he made a video about that a few years back and check out the live stream he did recently but anyway whenever they want to use that situation or they want to um you know yeah they want to use situational ethics what they will do is that they will start changing people's races start playing skin color games and calling people brown skin when they're light skin or call people dark skin when they're clearly brown skin or call somebody white when they're clearly a mixed race hispanic person like they'll do a lot of mind games like that just to try to like set up a certain narrative and try to like get a certain response out of people or to justify the bullshit that they're saying and you can definitely see that being used in the easiest situation because it's like okay so now all of a sudden this is a white man I thought Brazil was the mixed race paradise and there was no one drop rule and there were no monoracial people and everybody's mixed and just a rainbow like what happened and this is why also I'm constantly calling out the contradictions in the hypocrisy of the uh, of the Latin American racial system also because there's no consistency there either <laughs> just like there's no consistency in the United States because race was not devised to make sense it was just devised to always make uh sure that the European aesthetic or European uh, um European descendant dominant people will have the best outcome it was not 
divide so that mixed people of any mixture even if you only got five percent ten percent you know non-white ancestry in you race was not devised for mixed or monoracial non-white people to any degree at all so it's never gonna make sense so I'm not trying to racially define this guy or say oh he's black or say this or that or whatever but to me that is a mixed man he's Brazilian obviously he probably has a good amount of significant or indigenous ancestry I mean we could call the baby MGM as far as I'm concerned baby I'm pretty much black to me but you know potato potato like <laughs> you know so it's it's just it's semantics that's what it is it's semantics but I also I just wanted to point out how because they're trying to you know bash Isa and because going back to this issue that people in the Americas have with miscegenation especially miscegenation between black women and white ish or white men even though I don't see this as a white man but you get my point because that's a very salacious historical concept in the Americas to play off those emotions and that historical trope, they're calling this man a white man. When in Latin America, most places, I don't think that he'd be seen as a white man, but I don't know. I got to see more pictures of him. But um, yeah, like I, I found that very interesting. And just to piggyback off that, like another thing that really irks me about this situation is that I've spoken about how in Latin America, the gender and dating dynamic between black men and black women is literally the same. It's the imbalance is the same. Uh, men of African descent gravitating towards anything that's the opposite of them or lighter than them is the same the colorism is the same the colorism from the uncles and the aunties the same <laughs> like <laughs> all of that is pretty much the same so you see how Isa looks and Isa is a beautiful brown skin you know monoracially presenting black woman um we don't know her genetics but like I said monoracially presenting black woman she's a beautiful woman in shape you know hair on point body on point whatever whatever but she still had a lot of issues with Brazilian men who are not even black, mostly because of the, you know, like machismo culture that is in Latin America and like how honestly the men over there are not socialized and raised to be loyal or treat women good either. So not only are you dealing like with the cultural misogyny and devaluation of Latin women and women just in general, but especially women of color and black women. Um, and I won't even get into like the historical tropes behind like how black women have been sexually abused and exploited in latin america and brazil specifically but anyway that's a whole video on its own but um you know the way isa looks like i've watched a lot of videos of brazilian women not only on black brazil today's um channel but also just around the way where black women are talking about and expressing the same issues with colorism and black men you know not reciprocating their feelings and not taking them seriously you know I even spoke about this in um, a video that I did where I was like a feminist critique of that's called a feminist critique of light skin privilege where I literally spoke about this and how even in Brazil where the vast majority of the black women out there are mixed you know light skin quote unquote with good hair like in black america they tried to portray and would be called preferences here most of the black women out there a lot of them look like that you know a lot of them look like isa just very beautiful women brazil has this reputation of having some of the most beautiful black women of all skin tones and backgrounds yet the black women are still having an issue out there because the issue is not black women <laughs> the issue is the gendered relationship imbalance between black men and black women that is the issue so I can only I don't know that much about Isa's relationships with black men or you know what her opinions on them are but I can assume she's probably had the exact same experiences and she was trying to she was like listen I'm gonna go live my best life with these cute Latin kings that you know these athletes that are tatted up fine as hell because her baby daddy is fine like I heard he's dusty and he cheated on her but let's just be real like he fine as hell like <laughs> regardless of racially what you want to call him he fine as hell so <laughs> I'm just saying so <laughs> So I just wouldn't be surprised if with Isa has tried to make it work with brown skin and dark skin black men. And that was probably her preference. Like it is for most black women. She probably really tr tried to hold out for them and be with them too. And they probably did not value her and dogged her out and probably was chasing around Brazilian Heidi Klum's like I hear that they're doing. Um, so it's really unfortunate because like I'm saying, it's the same dynamic. And so I'm saying all this because despite it being the same dynamic even black brazilians still expect black women to uphold 
dark skin race the black family it's still your responsibility to through your womb continue to you know repopulate dark skin population or repopulate you know black people in general or whatever meanwhile that same standard and that same value is never upholded to black men and I don't need to be fucking Brazilian to know that because the standard is just different because they expect that black women are going to be black male worshipers they expect that black women are going to hold out hope and be left barefoot and pregnant by a brown skin or dark skin black man just to make sure that they have a couple of brown skin and dark skin kids and then you know then they can turn around and shame her for being a single mother and talk shit about how the kids act because the father wasn't as present and I'm not saying that this don't happen with light skin and mixed Brazilians either because it absolutely does <laughs> but I'm, I'm just saying that's what they expected they expect the Isa to sit around and wait for a brown skin or dark skin Brazilian black man to be ran through by a bunch of non-black women and then decide to get bored and come settle down with Isa so he can go unemotionally and maybe possibly unfortunately even physically abuse with her perhaps cheat on her leave her single mother whatever the hell and I know that non-black Brazilian poppy did the same thing but I'm just saying like you know like at least she tried like she tried to make it work with him um you know and I wouldn't be surprised if she tried to make it work with black men also but you know that's not how the cookie crumbled but she's still being drugged and I'm just saying like let's be real here with, even if she was with a brown skin or black or dark skin man she probably would have still had the same outcome she probably would have still had the same experience most likely as unfortunate to say but I wouldn't be surprised if she would have had the exact same experience as she got with the non-black dude so I, I just think that is really funny that it's basically like they're like no you need to stay in the black community and wait and get abused by a black man you can't don't be out here trying to you know make it work with non-black men and let them abuse you no you need to let our kings abuse you like that's basically the mentality to me so I'm not even trying to praise this relationship and say oh like he's so much better and da 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 and she chose a better situation I'm not even saying none of that but it's just like I just find it hilarious that black people do not do not have a better option for black women when it comes to a male mate they do not have a better option yet they want to sit in your comment section and drag your child and tell you what you should have could have would have done and like if you know anything about latin america or like football slash soccer culture or anything like that you know that black brazilian men are notorious swirlers like it is almost impossible to see a man of african descent of any skin tone or background with a woman of african descent that looks like him it is virtually impossible which is also interesting to me because if the issue is that white americans were just brainwashing them so much and that they just need to unlearn all of this you know brainwash colorism and white worship that apparently is white people's fault why is it that black men in every part of the world seem to have the same issue why are black women complaining about the same shit in literally every single part of the world <laughs> like the math is not mathing like the math just the math is never mathing but anyway now this is how delusional and manipulative these men are now they're trying to accuse black brazilian women of being the self-haters and they're trying to do this in the united states too not only are the delusional black males trying to do it but also the pick me's are trying to do it also and they're now trying to say oh black women who interracially date or have a divestment mindset are uh, white male worshipers and you know they over romanticize white men and blah 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 and blue 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 i need to talk to y'all about something i recently went to an event and there were about a thousand people there and of the couples that were there about 95 percent of them were black men with non-black women the person leading the event was a black man that was married to a white woman i'd be lying if i said that seeing all of this at the same time was not triggering this is pretty much what the dating scene looks like overall in LA. Here are four other observations that I picked up on since moving to LA. One, it's not equal. It's not like I'm seeing a bunch of black women dating outside their race. In fact, I'm barely seeing black women dating at all. Two, it's gotten so bad that at this point, whenever I do see a black man that's single, the first thing that I'm asking myself is, I wonder if he dates black women. Three, within the past couple months, I've had conversations with multiple black women that actually want to leave LA. Not because of the economy, not because they aren't flourishing in their careers, but simply because they feel like there's no love for them in LA. The fact that I know so many beautiful, talented, compassionate, evolved black women that are all feeling the same way makes no sense to me. And lastly, when you don't see yourself reflected in a space, you feel like you don't exist. As a black woman myself, I can tell you honestly, when it comes to the romantic space, I have never felt more invisible than I do living in LA. Bruh, 
I don't think the black women in L.A. like me, P. Because every time I talk to them, I be getting friend vibe. Like, they finna friends on me. But the Asians, the Koreans, the Mexicans, the Spanish, the Regians, all them women be loving me. The Asian women, the Mexicans, the Spanish, they be like, Ray Ray. They love how I talk. But the black women, I be feel like, soon as we start talking, I can tell, like, man, these folks finna try to friends on me. Or they want me to go out my way to entertain them. But them other races, they be loving me, bro. I don't know what it is. I know I hear it, it's real interracial. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's mixed up. You know what I'm saying? But I don't think the black women like men like that out here. I don't know what it is. I don't. But the white girls and the Spanish and Mexican women, but they love Ray Ray to death. They love me. They love me. Yeah. I don't know, bro. Like, why? Like, why black girls don't like me out here? Why? Because I'm black. My black. My mama don't fuck white, but I'm black. You got any kind of black in you, you're black. I'm black. But, okay. So this is editing Ishtar on the back end. And I actually didn't even realize that this country peanut looking dude was biracial until after the fact. So I actually didn't watch the entire video. I just assumed he was light skinned black. But I mean, this just further proves my point. I mean, potato, potato. I mean, y'all know this is basically semantics to me when it comes to cultural issues. Because if you're raised in a certain culture, that's what matters. If you're raised in a dusty black man worshiping culture, well, that's what you're how you're going to be socialized. Um, that's definitely the vibe I get here. And the hilariousness that we're supposed to believe that Asian and Mexican women, we supposed to believe that they have all this love for him. Meanwhile, he's over here struggling to string two sentences together. So I'm having a hard time believing these women can even understand what he's trying to communicate. Like as somebody who is partially a non-black woman herself and was raised up around non-black women, have sweetheart. Like I don't even be trying to say this stuff because, you know, they'll try to pull the bitter black woman thing. Like, I speak from a place of, like, actually, um, this is actually what I know. Like, you, I do not think you want to know what Mexican and Asian women think about black men. And then they'll try to spin it back around and be like, oh, these groups are racist. They're racist against black people. No, it's actually personal. And don't even get me, start getting me to be petty. Because a lot of this shit is specifically, um, towards black men but because we live in a black male worshiping culture and the black the black community wants to shield black men from accountability they will teach the entire black community oh everybody has an issue with blackness everybody's racist everybody's anti-black and occasionally that is true in some situations and for some individual non-black people but i have to be honest with you a lot of non-black people's issues with black people is actually just with black men and their issue with black women is because black women are enablers money and white money don't behave the same new black money and old white money have two totally different personalities new black money will jump on any poor white girl and make her a billionaire tiger woods rich white money doesn't operate that way you see have you ever seen an interracial relationship that was acceptable to you no interracial relationship is acceptable because we have too many black women who are unmarried black women are the largest population on the planet earth if you can't find one in america get it from africa if you can't get it from africa go to the caribbean go to canada go to europe why would a black man need to copy build a family with anything other than a black woman when you have so many black women available it is an exercise in self-hatred there's no way to get around it and yeah i'm not even going to get into the numerous reasons and ways that that's numerically impossible that black women are like these white idolizers and worshipers um so i don't really know where that comes from i feel like black women tend to interracially date or date men who don't look like them um not desperation is a negative word but basically black women are forced into that situation as where black men choose that and that's their primary first choice and then dating someone who looks like them either becomes their secondary choice or becomes their first choice later in life and that's the problem you can't wait until you're old and dusty at 50 and then decide okay now I see the value in settling down with a black woman and then you spent you know all your good years running around tricking off on non-black women that are 20 years younger than you <laughs> like that doesn't do anything and that's what we see a lot of when you see these so-called quote-unquote black couples have notice how they're all like over 40 and this usually their second marriage or something like you know no shade but I'm just being real here so it, it's the same dynamic in Latin America also so there's just so much evidence proving that that's not incorrect and you know people with narcissistic personalities even though I'm not qualified to diagnose anybody but 
I mean, it doesn't take any form of formal education. You can just watch a TikTok about narcissistic personality traits and see that culturally men of African descent have a lot of narcissistic personality traits. And one of the traits is constant projection. So everything that black women point out to them and, and hold a mirror up to their behavior, they will deflect onto black women and say that it's black women doing it. One of the easiest examples of that is the whole quote unquote single motherhood trope. So you have a reputation to non black people in the outside world your reputation is of you leaving your kids and abandoning your household so then you decide to project that onto black women and try to say oh well black women are so they're so hard to deal with that they're single mothers and everybody leaves them as single mothers so because they're just so hard to deal with it's black women black women are just so unmanageable because they're projecting it onto the woman so everything that they do that's negative about them they project onto black women and then the com- so-called community basically holds black women accountable because it's a black man worshiping culture and one of the, f- the things about misogyny is that you always scapegoat the woman so i just wanted to point that out so it's like it's hilarious when they look at brown skin and dark skin women that look like isa and then try to shame them and hold them to some standard of dating a black man and ho- upholding blackness it's like y'all are genuinely delusional if you still hold this belief in 2024 and y'all still making feel like black women hold any responsibility because it's funny how you don't feel like you have a responsibility to black women as a community to socialize your sons to value black women in all skin tones and to value wanting real relationships and creating full families with them you don't think that you have to socialize your sons to value that or to pursue those but then for some reason you expect your daughters to uphold this mythical like you know, amazing form of, you know, idea of, of blackness and the black family that is completely one-sided and, you know, you're going to scapegoat her for everything and anything bad that happens. And then even with this situation, when it's not even a black man that leaves her single mother, she quote unquote tried to quote unquote choose better. They're still scapegoating her and still dragging her. Like you're damned if you should do damned if you don't. <laughs> so yeah, it's just crazy so tired of getting this same comment over and over about how I ruined my bloodline by having a baby with a white man. First of all, excuse how I look because I've been cleaning, but I just want to start this off by saying y'all are weird as fuck. Like who even says that? First of all, I don't know what y'all think I'm going to have some pure black bloodline or something when I'm already mixed with black and white. And it's so weird to me how everyone goes around and saying how if a white girl gets with a black guy it's because she's fetishizing having mixed kids or something y'all are doing the same thing y'all are fetishizing having all black babies like what's the problem with being mixed with a little something something like i'm so sorry that i didn't go and pick my father's children based off the race of his skin like i went and got with somebody that i love and wanted to have kids with i went looking at him like hmm he's white he's gonna mess up my black bloodline and my babies need to be pure black no i wasn't thinking like that because that's weird so i just find it hilarious how they will see a black woman in a relationship with a man that they perceive as non-black or as a white man and use all of these shaming tactics and have all of this negative shit to say and completely bash her and her child and weaponize all of these racist and misogynistic attacks against them when in reality if the women in your community praise whiteness it's in response to something that the men in your community lack period and that goes for any group of people and that is why women of color if women of color are actual white male worshipers that's why they will because they see how much their community is lacking and mistreating them and offering them all of nothing and then they see how it's a different situation in the white community and whether it's uncomfortable to men or not that is the the truth so i'm just i find it hilarious black people in no part of the world have any any place to fix their mouth and come at any romantic or reproductive a black woman of any skin tone chooses to make period mind your fucking business you cannot provide better so you cannot speak on what black women needs to be doing or on our wombs anyway again in the comment section let me know what y'all thought about this video thanks for the support peace